So here we are, folks, for the final, final epi episode of this month uh, of Comic Fever. As I promised, I come to you with a review, but of not one, but two graphic novels uh, that came out of my bento box, and the reason why I did these two separate from the others is because these two were volume one and volume two of the same story so each story basically first starts off okay first i have to admit when i first uh started and when i read the cover I read Kevin Smith, and I'm not a huge Kevin Smith fan. I'll just come right out and say it. Um, More Rats was funny, uh, but and I was okay with Dogma, but all the stuff. It, it just I don't know, like. Red State, for instance, I think everybody can agree that that one was pretty much crap. You know, I don't think he did a good job on that one at all. But, anyway. So, this story... Okay, the, the books basically start off with a letter. Um, the first one starts off with a letter of, from Kevin James himself. And in it, basically, Kevin Smith is talking to the reader about what to expect. And basically filling you in, not so much about the book itself, but about what happened. Uh, because it initially uh, and initially was going to be a a movie. Uh, I will say that had this been the Green Hornet that we got um, instead of the one with, well, you know, however you want to pronounce his name, you can pronounce his name, but uh, if we had gotten this one, and hopefully a, a guy who can resemble this guy, <clears throat> I think we would have done, I think it would have been for a very great movie. I mean, it is action-packed. And it is awesome. And it has quite a story. I mean, you basically, you start off, and it's about, uh, the father of Britt Reed, uh, it uh, it starts off at, um, with Britt Reed Senior, and it basically uh, starts off as like his final mission, and he's decided well since he's pretty much uh, cleaned up the streets of his uh his city that he's done so he hangs up his coat and he's ready just to call it quits so he hangs up his coat and then it kind of does a flash forward and uh 
he makes a promise to his wife that he he he'll never allow Britt Reed Jr. to become the Green Hornet. Well, what ends up happening is in the future, uh, well, like I said, it, it warps to the to present day, I guess you could say, and. It has, it's, it's Britt Reed's breaking up with his girlfriend, and he basically has not the greatest relationship with his father, because he was never told as a child that his father was the Green Hornet. So the whole time he was growing up believing that the reason why um, his father was never around was because he was always late in work and that he cared and that he cared more about his uh, his job than his family. And that's what he was led to believe. And it was so much so that he even ended up missing his uh, his wife's funeral for some reason. And um, so, with that in mind, they end up having not the greatest of relationships. But then. All of a sudden, there's a, there's a, um, a banquet for the upcoming mayor, and during the, this banquet, um, during this banquet, there, there, there's somebody who comes and appears as the Hornet. Well, this one is calling itself the Black Hornet. So, the Black Hornet ends up, you know, uh, going in and basically kills the father and destroys this guy's life. This guy's life. And it it isn't until he gets angry and he starts realizing, you know, the whole time that he was angry about his father, and, but now he's angry because his father's been killed, and now he just wants answers. So he goes to this bar. Well, at this bar. He runs into some thugs, and they start beating the crap out of him. Well, in the middle of it, there's this old man who is kind of just sitting at the bar, his back turned, and saying pretty much as little as possible, you know, saying, oh, I just want to see how you fight, and, uh, oh, it's not. And it turns out that the old man at the bar used to be friends with, uh, Britt Reed's, Britt Reed Sr. And it also turns out that he used to be, uh, the first Cato. So, so they decide, so he ends up getting involved, and he finally, you know, does stop the people from beating them up, and then finally just gets them out of the, the bar, and they have a discussion, and he shows them pretty much everything about his about 
the world his father used to really be a part of. And uh, that's pretty much what this story does. It, it tells you the beginning, you know, and it tells you over, each one is called an episode, but they're basically uh, like four or five, five different comic books in one. And they finally, you know, they, they kind of figure out, but don't, um, what's going on, and, but it, it's not until volume two, where things really start to come to light. And in volume two, um, they find out that one of the old mobsters of the city, who the original Hornet took care of, his son has took it upon himself to come back for vengeance against these guys. It started off as uh, the mayor of the town just basically wanted to uh, pull the Green Hornet out of retirement and lock him up and prove that he can be a great mayor again and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, there's double dealings going on and other th other really cool things happen. Uh, anyway, and the only thing, the only disappointing thing I have about the whole, the story as a whole is I like that it's not taking an older character and turning it this way, but the new Kato ends up being the daughter of, which explains why on number one it shows a female, but the new Kato ends up being the daughter of the original Kato. And um, so, like, but I, like I was saying, the one thing that I was a little disappointed by is you're kind of, you know, like everything else, uh, I think these days, you're kind of given the last minute bomb uh, at the end, and it turns out that the... This version of Gato is a lesbian. Now, I know people are going to disagree. I mean, what I do like is that it's um, a different person. You know, uh, it's the same, same character. You know, but, you know, it's Kato. But, it's a different person and a different gender. Um, so it's just really a different person. But, I do, I, I really am more against when known characters, you know, like, Characters you've known for years, and all of a sudden they decide, oh well, he's gay, or oh, oh well, she's gay, you know, and just kind of putting it out there. Uh, sorry, that's my little rant, but all in all, I have to give my thumbs up to this entire series. Um, 
Volume 1 and 2. Because it was action-packed. And it was awesome. Uh, it, it, it was really non-stop action. Uh, if it was a movie, it would be awesome. Uh, like I said, the first one had a letter from Kevin Smith uh, to the reader. And the second one was from Phil Hester, from a guy named Phil Hester, who also worked on the thing. I think it was very vibrant. I think it was very, well, the story was very well told. And it was all around a really good book. And like I said about the others, like I'm going to say about this, um, even if, even though I know I've pretty much given you story by story what these things are about, I couldn't tell you everything that was in these stories because there is just so much. One and two, there's still, even if I, I totally ruined everything for you, you could still read it and I think it would be just as awesome. Okay, so that is my review of The Green Hornet by Kevin Smith. Alright. I hope you I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, please like, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, give me a thumbs up, comment, rate, thumbs up. Please give me a thumbs up. You know what? Don't like it. Don't give me anything. Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, if you do like it. Alright, so. Bye, and I will see you on the next Comic Fever. More than like the next month. Right? Bye.